Dear Sir, I am sick and wired of tasting hard-earned money on inferior merchandise. I bought Wiss White Twiwer six months ago and has been in your service shop more when on my desk. As you can see, the T and W are swill reversed. Or do I mean the W and T are swill reversed? Also, the full swap and the comma fail will register. So if you're reading Wiss out loud, you should now be out of wef. <laughs> I can hardly, hardly wait to see what will go wrong next. <laughs> Sir, I am sick and tired of wasting hard-earned money on inferior merch. <laughs> Whoever said the pen is mightier than the sword never had one of these. Of course, no doubt the sword's defective, too. Seems like so many things are today. Not just little things, either. I mean, big things. Cars. I keep reading in the paper, they're calling back cars all the time because they find defects in them. That happened to me. My first new car. First new car I ever had. I always had before that, I always had old, funky, used, secondhand junkers, right? So I finally got a new car, my first new car. Oh, it was a thrill. Little things about it thrilled me. Looking for it in a car park without following a stream of water. <laughs> I used to find my car that way. Come out with bundles and have to look around. Okay, where am I? Oh, here I am. Oh, wait, I got antifreeze. Hey, man, where? Oh, the green stream. <laughs> and I'd be frustrated from the beginning because I never find a place close to the store, you know? Some people got that knack. You know those people? Oh, here's the place. Oh, I hate those people. <laughs> then you got some people have no scruples. They'll park in a space that says disabled persons only and then limp in. <laughs> I've never been able to do that. I'm too paranoid, you know? Afraid somebody will see me and then follow me and then I'll have to carry it through for four years, you know? Oh, they're still watching. <laughs> Gotta keep this up. Don't want to do time for this. Imagine doing time. What are you in for? Impersonating a limp. <laughs> so my first new car was called back. I'll tell you something, though. It doesn't have to be new to be called back. I read someplace in the paper once they called back 35,000 cars that were two years old. Cars were two years old and all of a sudden, they found out there was some little part defective. It's never a simple part, either. You know, they never call your car back to fix the clock, right? <laughs> First thing that goes, or the squeak under the dash, it drives you insane. It's always some crucial thing. Well, all this bolt breaks and all the wheels fall off. <laughs> and when I read that, I thought, no, wait a second. How'd they suddenly find that out? That car's been on the road for two years now. They've made two other models since then. How did they suddenly find out that part was defective? I mean, did some guy in the assembly line suddenly flash to it? Oh, no! <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I forgot to tell him about that bolt. <laughs> I remember that day I got drunk at lunch. I forgot all about it. What am I gonna do? Maybe I can slip something in the suggestion box. <laughs> yeah, I'll put Harry's name on it. <laughs> but the more I thought about it, the more I realized that the auto companies don't find out about that. There's some poor guy's cars wrapped around a tree someplace. He's the guy that found out about it. <laughs> all right, what happened here? Well, this bolt broke and all the wheels fell off. <laughs> well, who told you? Well, the driver did. Those were his dying words. <laughs> his cars are lethal. A lot of lethal things. They're calling back, I uh, read someplace, they call back microwave ovens because they were leaking lethal radiation. And there again, I'll bet the company didn't find out about that. Probably some guy got up one morning, his eyebrows fell out. <laughs> A little suspicious, took the oven back. Here's your oven back. Well, what's wrong with it? You tell me. Had it two months, my whole family's bald and my dog's sterile. <laughs> 
car. I think it's worse when your car is called back, because, I don't know, a man seems to have a relationship with his automobile. Now, maybe that's just me, because I always kind of fantasized about cars when I was a kid, fantasized about being a race driver. I used to fantasize a lot when I was young. I had a very vivid imagination when I was little. In fact, I had an imaginary playmate till I was about, oh, five or six, I guess. I still hear from him occasionally. <laughs> it's a fun thing about being a comedian, see, I can keep in touch with my childhood. Takes up a lot of my time, though. Takes a lot of time being a comedian. I spend a lot of time in here working, a lot of time at the studio working, a lot of time traveling around the country working. Yeah, it's difficult, especially on my relationship with my wife, you see. Especially when I travel, because then we gotta try and maintain our relationship on the phone, and that's really difficult. And Suzanne, like most women, loves to keep me off guard. Loves to. See, what she'll do, she'll wait to the end of a long distance phone conversation, and then hit me with some devastating remark, and I'll just be awake for the next two weeks trying to figure out, was she joking? Or did she really mean that? Well, I'll sure be glad to get home, I'll tell you. Well, I'll be glad when you get home as well. You've been away for ages. Oh, I know it. And you got no idea how much I've missed you. Sure? Well, sure, I'm sure. You know, listen, I gotta catch an early plane. I better get some sleep. All right, then, darling. I love you. I love you too, sweetheart. Good night. Good night, then. Oh, Kelly. Yeah. Uh, when you get home, I want to talk to you about your inability to satisfy me sexually. Good night. <laughs> no! Now, do you have any idea what it's like to fly home with that sort of remark burning in your mind? <laughs> I gotta admit, it's a good device for keeping guys in line. You know, and in all fairness to myself, I don't think it's really true, because knowing Susanna the way I do, she wouldn't be here when I got home if it was, you know? Oh, I mean... Naturally, I'm only human. There are occasions when I don't say uh, measure up, as it were, you know? I think it happens to most guys. I think most men, whether they want to admit it or not, at one time in their lives probably have suffered from impotence, you know? Because there's so many things that can cause it. You know, it's mostly mental, you know? And if you got a lot of worries about your job, or a lot of worries about money, or uh, pressures at work, or performance anxiety, or too much drink, that will cause it. I've been through that. Because, you know, when you drink a lot, you might want to, but alcohol somewhere along the line impairs your functionability, you know. <laughs> oh, if that's happened once or twice, the third time you get home, you know, ain't nothing gonna happen in life. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. I've been through this before. <laughs> you can try if you want. I'll just watch. <laughs> And you sleep terrible when you're drunk anyway. You make those awful noises. <laughs> Saliva hanging out the side of the mouth. And you wake up and your breath ignites the sheets. Where am I? I'm in hell! I'm dying, I'm in hell. Oh, it's ruined many a honeymoon, I'm sure. <laughs> Of course, you get over that pretty quick, especially when you're newly married. See, I don't think sex is a problem then because, uh, well, it's kind of the foundation of the initial re uh, attraction, you see. I think it's, uh, the, the hard part about marriage is after that first flush of desire kind of diminishes down to realistic proportion, see? Then you gotta learn to live together with all those everyday humdrum banalities that we go through, you know? I mean, nothing prepared me for that. Oh, I don't think prepared a lot of people for it. Certainly the media doesn't give you a realistic view of life. Especially on television. Now, TV gives us an eyes view of life. Romanticized, fantasized, and idealized. I mean, how many times have you seen a scene like this on television? Now, this isn't life. As you get older, you learn how to handle life's little meadow muffins in a 
mature, reasonable fashion. <laughs> Hello, darling. How was your day? <laughs> How did the show go? <laughs> Never mind, darling. There'll be other audiences. <laughs> <laughs> now then, here's your scotch. Thank you. And here's the rest of it. <laughs> now you just relax. I am relaxed. Oh. I just had a miserable day. Started out miserable. I got booked for driving the wrong way around Marble Arch. <laughs> I backed up traffic all the way to Windsor. Got to the studio late. No food left in the canteen. And in the Capitol, the producer wanted to know if my zipper always came apart halfway through my act. <laughs> Did I think that was funny? Sounds funny to me. It would. Can't you show me a little sympathy? Oh, well, that answers one question. What question? These questions. See? It's a quiz. How to tell if the romance has gone out of your mind. Oh, that's baloney, Suzanne. We're just as romantic as we ever were. Anything to eat? <laughs> And that answers the last question. What are you talking about? Well, listen to this. If your husband comes home after a hard day at the office and you greet him wearing your sexiest black negligee, does he A, hurl you to the floor and have his way with you, completely forgetting the guest he's brought home for dinner? <laughs> B, think he's in the wrong house and walk out again? <laughs> C, ignore you completely and ask what's for dinner? What is for dinner? <laughs> See. Oh, that stuff is all rubbish. Oh. Well, then you won't want to know your score, will you? Well, I didn't say that. OK, then. Listen to this. If he scored between 8 and 10, he's hurled you to the carpet three times during this quiz. <laughs> <laughs> if he scored between 5 and 8, you should start sprinkling something on his all bran. <laughs> If he scored less than five, you should phone the mortuary and see if they've lost a stiff. <laughs> what did I score? You're a stiff. Now, come on. You don't really believe all that junk, do you? Look, Kelly, we don't talk anymore. Well, we're talking now. Yeah, but there's something missing. You mean the, uh, gym slip and the warm custard? <laughs> no, look, I mean something more basic. Well, nothing more basic than a gym slip and warm custard. Now, isn't that typical? I ask for romance and I get a joke. Oh, come on, Suzanne. Where's your sense of humor? Never mind my sense of humor. Where's the romance? Never mind the romance. Where's the dinner? <laughs> oh, that's exactly what I mean. Do you know the last time you took me out to dinner? Oh, yeah, sure. It was a couple of days ago. It was a couple of months ago. And my idea of romance is not eating a Chinese takeaway in a petrol queue. <laughs> What's that all about? You work your buns off, you come home, and all of a sudden, according to some frigid old maid on a woman's magazine, I'm a stiff from the mortuary. <laughs> Was it really a couple of months ago I took her out to dinner? Had to be, because Suzanne never forgets anything. I mean, anything. She still likes to remind me about that time I got my aerosol cans mixed up. It was the morning when I made the mistake of trying to get ready before I had my first cup of coffee. Now, when you're in that condition, all aerosols look alike. <laughs> I didn't realize my mistake till we went to the cinema. Suzanne had dragged me to one of those arty Italian movies that has absolutely no basis in reality. Matronna, ma... Oh, 
Constantino. Il Carasandri mi taglia, no? E ora mi ora Constantino. Che era? Ma lo potrò ripetere con tutto il mio collo padano. Che otto? Nione alle notte. Ti sei fatta salavino. Carlo non l'ha la prossima. when I first realized I had used shaving cream instead of deodorant. <laughs> Suzanne insisted upon leaving there and then. <laughs> and naturally, it was raining. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot to learn about being married. That's one reason I'm glad I waited, because Well, until you learn to know and live with yourself, it's damn difficult to learn to live with somebody else. Boy, we had our difficulties. Seemed like little things would always uh, be difficult, like the bathroom, I'm telling you. Now, whoever designed the bathroom had to live alone because it's impossible for, the, for two people to get ready at the same time in the average size bathroom without creating friction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Vincent Van Gogh lost his ear. He shared a bathroom with his mistress. <laughs> Would you watch that? <laughs> Probably the worst experience, though, was the day the plumber had been to our place to fix the shower. Oh, Kitty, by the way, don't, don't forget the plumber switched the hot and cold taps around. <laughs> well, it seems like this happening every day of the week, naturally, it would cause no end to argument. And like most couples, we had to learn to argue intelligently. Because in the beginning, instead of communicating our feelings and frustrations, well, our arguments would quickly degenerate into childish name-calling. Oh, for God's sake. Idiot! Dimwit! <laughs> Pink squeak! <laughs> squeak! <laughs> Goofball! These women drive you crazy. <laughs> That's when it became a challenge. <laughs> ah, here it is. Ancient curses. <laughs> Toad sucker. Speaker. Ass flicker. Ass flicker. That's the first thing in here. You've well, been looking at my book. I've been looking you snuck in my room and looked at my snuck. So our arguing continued. In fact, it got so bad we decided to see a psychologist to get an objective opinion. You have never once come over with the same thing happening in your head. You had 
no brains at all. That's every, every time no you come on, you don't. You have no, no brains. Oh, come yourself. on. I am insulting you. Oh, enough, 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 enough. You came here to me for advice. Now, unfortunately, the psychologist became so involved with our arguments that we had to see a second psychologist in order to get an objective opinion. However, he too became involved, and so we went before a panel of counselors selected by the British Council on Domestic Tranquility. And of course, not only did the panel become involved, but the entire Council on Domestic Tranquility soon became the Council on Domestic Hostility. <laughs> After that experience, we found we could settle our differences much better and much cheaper over a romantic dinner. Hmm. Maybe that's what we need now. Your champagne, sir. Oh, thank you. No, 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 thank you. I'll take care of that, please. <laughs> thank you. Very good, sir. Champagne. First flowers and now champagne. Not bad for a stiff from the mortuary, wouldn't you say? <laughs> ah, there's no more romantic sound than that of a champagne cork popping. True. Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> now, my dear, this calls yes. for, uh... A little toast, wouldn't you say? I would. Here's two. Rooms. Are you ready to order, sir? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Suzanne, what are you going to have? Oh, why don't you choose for me, darling? You always pick exactly what I like best. Shall I come back later, sir? No, no, we're ready. We'll take it now. Let's see. Um, okay, the lady will start with uh, a dozen escargot. One dozen escargot. Uh, darling, there's, there's too much garlic. Oh, uh, too much garlic. No escargot. Uh, do you have organ melon? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, the lady will start with organ melon. <gasps> but I had a melon for breakfast. Oh, as I said, the lady had melon for breakfast. <laughs> no melon. Uh, smoked salmon? Smoked salmon. Smoked salmon. Smoked salmon. Smoked salmon. Salmon? Make that two smoked salmon. Oh, why don't you have the escargot and then I can have some of yours and you can have some of mine? <laughs> okay. Make that one dozen escargot and one smoked salmon. <laughs> one dozen smoked salmon. <laughs> one smoked salmon, one dozen escargot. Now, the main course. And may I remind you, the kitchen closes in six and a half hours. <laughs> okay, the lady will have the sole bon femme. Sole bon femme. Uh, but darling, I I'm having fish to start with. Oh, that's right, the lady's having <laughs> fish to start with. One smoked salmon, one dozen escargot. What's this uh, veal a la maison? Ah, now that is thin slices of veal with a cream sauce with champignon, then stuffed with pâté de foie gras, then baked in a wafer-thin pastry cell for precisely 32 and a half minutes. Sounds wonderful. It is wonderful. One veal a la maison. Veal a la maison, excellent choice. But I'm on a diet. <laughs> 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 one smoked salmon, one dozen escargot. Let's see what's good for a diet. When did you go on a diet? This afternoon. <clears throat> Let's see, chicken's good for a diet. Mm -hmm. Say, do you have any chicken? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, we do have chicken. We have chicken Kiev, chicken supreme, chicken surprise, chicken a la king. We have roast chicken, boiled chicken, fried chicken. We have chicken fricassee, chicken croquettes, chicken vol au vent. We have chicken legs, chicken wings, chicken breasts, and chicken feed. 
What was that fourth one again? <laughs> you just order me a steak? Okay, lady will have a sirloin steak. Sirloin steak. Uh, fill it. Oh, uh... <laughs> one smoked salmon, one dozen escargot, one fillet steak. And how would you like that cooked? Medium. Rare. Rare? <laughs> Medium. And for sir... Oh, he'd have a Dover so. I will? You will! <laughs> okay, um, may I see the wine list, please? my darling, for a lovely romantic evening. My pleasure, my dear, my pleasure. A little champagne? Oh, but of course. <laughs> I wonder if when they're treading on the grapes for champagne, if the bubbles tickle their feet. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we have our drinks on the balcony? Oh, of course, you mad romantic fool. You finally noticed. I did. <laughs> oh, about that toast, by the way. Yes, yes. about that toast. <laughs> 